I want to talk today about the life cycle of a brown dwarf, which is perhaps the least interesting life cycle in the universe. Brown dwarfs are born. They are somewhat hot when they are born. And then slowly they cool off. And then they're not so hot anymore. The end. There's some subtleties to this, of course, uh, but it's contrast that contrast that with like the life cycle of a star where stars get to change their brightness and, and get bigger. And then they might even go nova or supernova or become a planetary nebula and transition into a completely different object like a white dwarf. And it's like all sorts of cool stuff. Brown dwarfs. No, they're just going to exist and they're just going to chill out for trillions of years. So brown dwarfs, when they're born, they're freshly minted. They're going to be nice and hot. They're going to be not, they're not going to be brown. I don't, don't get me started on the name. Brown dwarfs aren't really brown. They're more like a magenta color, a very, very deep red. And then as they age, they cool off because they lose heat from their initial formation. And they actually start glowing more in the infrared than in the visible. So they become dimmer and dimmer to us. But if you were to put on night vision goggles, you'd see them glowing like embers. But even that over time steadily goes away. And even though brown dwarfs by definition aren't stars because they aren't fusing hydrogen in their cores, they do sometimes get to play the fusion game. It's not hydrogen to helium being fused inside their cores, but deuterium. Deuterium is when you take a proton and a neutron and glue them together. Now you have a little bit of deuterium. If you slam that with another proton, you make helium-3, which is just another molecule, and you get a little bit of energy left over. This fusion process requires slightly lower temperatures than the temperatures needed for full on like real fusion of hydrogen into helium. You can get away with slightly cooler interiors like the interiors of a red dwarf star. At the beginning of their life cycles, for the most massive red dwarf stars, they are fusing deuterium in their cores. They'll fuse deuterium for somewhere around 10 to 20-ish million years, which as stars go is, is not that long at all. And in fact, the biggest, re the biggest brown dwarf stars are almost indistinguishable from the smallest red dwarf stars. So red dwarf stars are actual real stars actually fusing hydrogen in their cores. Brown dwarfs are not, but the coolest real stars are barely distinguishable from the hottest not stars. But as they age, the differences grow. Eventually, they'll run out of deuterium. Their interiors of the brown dwarf stars are constantly cycling material. This is a term we call fully convective, where material, uh, the brown dwarf stuff, you know, hydrogen and helium, can sink down to all the way to the core and rise up all the way to the surface and back down and back up, stretching across all the layers of that star, of that object. And because of this, if there's any deuterium in that brown dwarf, it will eventually find its way to the core where it will be fused into helium-3. And eventually, the entire star will run out. Now, this only happens on the most massive of the brown dwarfs, because you do need a certain critical threshold temperature to get that deuterium fusion party going. And the smallest brown dwarfs don't even have that, so they never get to play the fusion game, but we won't judge them. And these brown dwarfs, no matter their size, no matter how they start, eventually they stop. Either they never make deut either they never fuse deuterium, or they'll stop fusing deuterium, and then they just cool off. They just cool off and slide from visible view and peak more and more in the infrared. We do have classification schemes for these stars, which is. Stellar classification is a whole other episode that I don't really want to get into right now. Feel free to ask and I can just don't get me started on stellar classifications yet. But for brown dwarfs, we start with the letter M. 
This is the same letter we assign to the small red dwarf stars, which again are actual stars. So an M star could be a real star. It could be a brown dwarf. You need more observations. You need to measure its mass to be able to tell. And then as it continues on in its life cycle, it will go down into what we call L, T, and Y. I don't even see. I don't even remember. I'm looking at my notes here because it's M, L, T, Y. I don't even remember this kind of stuff. But it's just various classifications uh, for essentially either the mass of the brown dwarf or its life cycle because a uh, brown dwarf can be born and if it's small when it's born it might just start out being a, a t class that's all it's gonna be and then eventually it'll move on into y but, or maybe it's born with a little bit more mass and it'll start way up there as an m class brown dwarf and then over the course of tens of millions of years it'll slide down into l t and y maybe they'll even be born as y and, ne and hardly ever be visible for their entire lifetimes. So the youngest and most massive brown dwarf stars are barely distinguishable from cool stars. And the oldest and smallest brown dwarfs are barely distinguishable from planets. So even though, even though they have this really boring life cycle where maybe you get to fuse deuterium for a little bit, but then otherwise you're just chilling out for trillions of years, they, they actually straddle this line between stars and planets where they, they get to be a little bit of both. And at the same time, a little bit of neither. So brown dwarfs, weird, but also, also doing their own thing. Shine on, you crazy diamonds. We love you. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked it. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. Make sure you subscribe to notifications when I go live. Go to patreon.com slash PM Sutter so that you can support these shows. And I will see you next week. Thanks for watching.